it was a very dark thing. So then that projects to everyone else. It's very absurd. And then everyone's like, oh yeah, let's talk about babies being murdered. This is just slander for everybody now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then, <laughs> let's okay, look at if, you know, if everyone's getting slandered, then it's an inclusion. Let's okay, go. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go one person, let's go person by person. We're going to slander everybody in here. Um, All right, next is you. How? <laughs> no, Chili next. Chili. All right, yeah, we're going after Chili next. All right, so now, okay, so now let's look at it. Is there a way that absurdities can work in the opposite direction? In other words, where we can promote an absurdity and it actually has the opposite effect. I'm not sure if that question makes sense. Yeah. Uh, can you explain it? Um, so, for example, let's say that, all right, so let's say that um, earlier when you were asking, when you were mentioning Andrew Tate, and you're saying misogyny, and you, and you made a reference to, um, let's say that women belong in the kitchen. And, I'll, and I asked you something to effect of, don't they? Now, did anybody, was anybody here kind of nodding along going, okay, so Scanlon says the women belong in the kitchen? No. Now, hopefully what you, you understood that this was me asking a question, and even asking an absurd question. And sometimes we can ask, we can state an absurdity in such a way that it kind of uh, argues for the opposite. That makes sense. You can think of um, a parody. You know, a uh, parody? Yes. Yeah, so for example, if anyone's familiar with like um, the Babylon Bee or the Onion news source, news, they're not real news sources, they're, they're, they're parody news. They're supposed to be, they're satire, they're supposed to be ridiculous. And by being ridiculous, they're supposed to make the opposite argument of what they're actually arguing. Um, so, like for example, like let's say for example, um, if Andrew Tate came out tomorrow and was wearing a pair of glasses and a different kind of suit, a non-shiny suit, and he said, hey listen, these past few years have just been an enormous troll. I wasn't serious about any of this stuff. And then he goes on to point out that the, that the real problem wasn't so much with what he was saying, but the real problem was that you have so many young men who are unguided by other men such that they look to the internet for a role model. Or such that even if they don't look to the internet, they find a role model there. So like for example, people have asked me, what, what did I think about him? And the, the truth is, is that I, I don't know much about him. I've heard some interviews with him, and the kinds of interviews I've heard with him have been um, pretty much like people who, who don't think he's so terrible, and they're saying, they're putting up videos saying, listen to what the guy's saying. And so then they'll show clips, and then they'll comment on those clips. So of course the clips that they're showing are going to be things that make him look not so bad. And I've also seen videos where people are saying, can you believe this horrible pig? And then they're showing clips of him saying things that, you know, with no context, that you can sit there and go, see, oh yeah, he actually is pretty horrible. Can you say horrible things and, and out of context such that people will, will, will think that you actually believe that? Oh yeah. It's like students have asked me before if it's ever okay to record my, my talks in here. And I say yes, as long as you record the whole thing. That's why I, I run the video here and I run the whole talk, because if, if you just have an audio clip of, of, of me saying, well, don't women just belong in the kitchen? And then suddenly I'm all over KUSI. It's like, you know, local teacher is explaining that all that women belong in the kitchen. And you know, local teachers on, on paid administrative leave as they review his because you're gonna have this as one clip. And I've seen stuff like that happen before. Like what was the one I saw not too long ago? Um, uh, the teacher is like, oh, I, I can't remember where she was. Now I don't want to speculate where she was, I don't remember. But she makes a comment. Um, because they're they're reading a book and um, I think it was a scarlet letter. And it's about like Puritanism and religion and, and, and social norms. And uh, some student made a reference to someone being a pedophile. And she said, no, we don't call them that. They're minor attracted people. And if you just read like the, the transcript, it sounds like she's saying, you know, no, no, don't judge them. But, but if you hear her saying it, her tone is, oh, no, no, we shouldn't judge them. They're just minor attracted people. You can hear in the tone that she's not serious about that. It's designed to, to get the students like fired up and, and so that, that way they can defend it. Because if it is such a clear thing that that's, a horrible, like, that that's a horrible thing to do, then it should be pretty easy for us to be able to explain why it's such a terrible thing to do. And yet, <clears throat> it's like if I asked you guys what's wrong with murder, most of us would sit and go, well, of course, it, I mean, it's murder. Like, duh, murder equals murder. But what's wrong with murder? Well, you're killing someone. Yeah, what's wrong with that? In other words, 
we take for granted. I'm not saying that, that taking that thing for granted means it's wrong. I'm just saying we should be able to explain why, why it's wrong. But, um, importantly, because once you can explain why murder is wrong, you can explain why a whole bunch of other human activity is wrong or right. For example, one of the things that's wrong with, human, with, with murder is that there's no distinction in terms of the intrinsic value, the value of you as a human being, just by virtue of the fact that you're a human being. You are no more or less valuable than anyone else. And when you murder somebody, you, you, you change that balance, where now you put a person below you and you elevate yourself. If you can see a person who's willing to do that in that extreme case, think about every other context in which they're willing to do it. That's a person who's very likely to be able to, to institute policies that, that, that suppress people. It's, it's a person who's likely to, to carry out that kind of attitude towards humanity in their daily lives. That's a person who's willing to lie and manipulate you and, and all those other kinds of things. If they're willing to go to that one extreme, there's a whole bunch of other things in between. But if it's true that we shouldn't uh, elevate or, 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 or depreciate anybody on our intrinsic value, then a whole bunch of other things go along with that. But instead, if we just simply go, I, that one action in isolation, <clears throat> independent of the theoretical precepts beneath it, is wrong, then now we have to reason through every single little case. Instead of being able to walk, work from this principle of everybody has equal intrinsic value, so we should therefore treat people this way. Well, now we're, that, that would lead us to be kinder to people. That would lead us to be more authentic with people. It would cause us to be more honest with people. But if we elevate ourselves, well, then we're better than everybody else, and so therefore we don't have to. You know? So. So if, if, if we can get people to believe that kind of a, of a positive thing, well, then we can get people to believe. Actually, I'll go back. I'm, let me go back to finish off that one point. So if you can get people, so if we understand that, that treating people, that, that murder is wrong on, the, on those kinds of, a, of a grounds, well, now you can start to reason your way back. And that's what this teacher was trying to do. She was presenting a case that was obviously wrong and trying to get the students to be able to explain why so that they could do that. Well, now, though, if you take her completely out of context, she sounds horrible. She sounds horrible. And if I'm not mistaken, she had to, uh, she, she had to sue or threaten to be a lawyer before they finally backed off of it. But by that point, she had already been suspended. Her, her name had been all over the news. You know, it completely destroys her reputation at the school. And why? Because someone took a, a sentence or two out of, out of, out of context. That, hell, that could happen to me. I mean, almost every single class, couldn't it? Just from talking to you guys, not presenting ideas, not arguing for anything. Again, if I do my job well, none of you are ever going to know what it is I really think about anything. You might think you know. You might hear me talk about things and go, well, he talks about this a lot. This must be what he believes. <clears throat> I actually had a student one time tell me, talk to me after, I told you, after class, I have no problem talking about stuff. And I had a student one time tell me that he thinks he figured out what it is I believe because if, I, if they find me defending something really strongly, I probably don't believe it. In other words, I go stronger in the opposite direction. And oh, maybe that's just what you, I want you to think. You never can tell. So my job is not to indoctrinate you. These are people whose jobs it is kind of to indoctrinate you because they want you to listen. They want you to pay attention. They want, they want to promote something. How much of this does Andrew Tate actually believe? I don't know. I don't know. I imagine probably quite a bit. And that's kind of the absurd loop that you find yourself in. If you say the kinds of things that I've heard him say about, about the sexes, well then who do you suppose he surrounds himself with? If you're somebody who's, who's, a, who's a social media influencer and you're always in the limelight, you're always in the spotlight, you're famous, who do you think is, is surrounding you? If not the same kinds of people. And the same kinds of people are opportunistic, they're manipulative, they're, they're trying to get ahead themselves, so they're using you, and then that kind of confirms what it is that you think about people. Ah, oh, see, everybody I come across is like this. Well, maybe the problem is you. Maybe the problem is that when you espouse certain views, people, the, those kinds of people surround you, and then it confirms what, you, what you're saying about the world. You know, it's kind of like, if you think, if you think that the world is, 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 if you think that all women are blank, there's a problem with you. There's a problem with the women you're surrounding yourself with. If you think all men are blank, then there's a problem with you. There's a problem with who you're surrounding yourself with. It's just like, if you can talk to me at length about toxic masculinity and what that is, but you can't tell me a single word about toxic femininity, there's a problem with who you're hanging out with. 
there's a problem with what you're reading because you're being indoctrinated. You can't show me that, that these things, and if your idea is that it exists only on one side, there's another word for that, indoctrination, propaganda. And this is what you've received. These, things, these, these problems exist on all sides, and they concern all of us. Why should, why should the state of men bother women? Well, because if, if you're a woman and you want a man for the rest of, you know, to, to spend your life with, that's going to determine the quality of your life. If you're a man, why should you care about, about, about women's feelings and, what, and, and, how, and how society treats women? Because those women that you're subscribed to and that you're following on social media, someday you're going to try to marry someone, and, you're, and they're going to have a social media history, and they're going to have all that. Is that what you want for your family, for your children? Yeah, and then we'll say things like, well, but, but men have been doing it for the longest while. Yeah, and how's that worked out? Has that been a good thing? Has that somehow benefited society, men acting badly? So now we kind of make it all even by everybody acting badly. And then Andrew Tate comes along, and there's lots of evidence now for what he's saying. Look how all these women are behaving. Of course, if you're following all these women on social media, then of course they are. But what we miss about that is, dudes, you're the ones following them. That's what's allowing that to happen. That's what's, that's what's perpetuating it. That's what's making the behavior more extreme and outrageous. And if that's the kind of person that, that you want, <clears throat> You're going to be sorely disappointed. You'll be sorely disappointed in that. And so, we can get people to believe absurd things, man. We can get people to believe. We can get people to behave in really absurd ways. Yeah. Questions, comments, concerns, complaints, criticism, takes. Happy Tuesday, huh? <laughs>